On this week's episode of A Drier Dose of Disney, Jared shares with us his strategy for Hollywood Studios and how to hit all of the rides and shows there. Welcome to another episode of A Dryer Dose of Disney. I'm your host, Jared Dryer, and today we're going to be taking you through our rope drop strategies of Hollywood Studios out in Orlando. And today, if you're watching on video, I am wearing my Raiders of the Lost Ark shirt that I picked up out at Disney World. I'm a big fan of this park of Hollywood Studios. I'm a big Star Wars fan. I love the Indiana Jones Stunt Spectacular Show. So a lot of cool things to do at this park, and we're going to walk you through how to maximize your day and how to hit every single one of those. Again, this is a larger series of episodes where we talk about rope drop at all of the Orlando parks. We're also going to talk about Universal and the Anaheim parks as well. You definitely want to subscribe. So if you're not subscribed today, please click that wherever you're listening to us, whether that's on a podcast or out there on YouTube, however you're consuming our content. We want to make sure that you're getting these episodes delivered to your inbox every single week when they drop on Tuesdays. So please click that subscribe button. And then as always, Always, we always ask uh, politely, hey, if you found a tip or trick that saved you just a little bit of money or saved you a little bit of time, uh, let us know about it over at Patreon. Either become a subscriber or you can make a small donation to us there. As well as you'll hear us talk all the time about our I Can Do This All Day tip of the day. And with that, we've got some cool merchandise. We've got lots of water bottles out there. In fact, I just got another one that just came in with a straw on it because I do like having a straw on my water bottle. We've got lots of really cool apparel and bags and backpacks and fanny packs. I've got a couple over here, but really good merchandise out there. So go check it out. And in fact, uh, we recently just added a whole bunch of color schemes out there too. Lots of cool things to see out there at our Etsy shop at a drier dose of Disney. So check us out there. And then as always, we always tell people, hey, if you're not on our Facebook, page, jump on our Facebook page, click follow and like there, and you'll be subscribed to our content on Facebook. When deals come out or we see that companion pass from Southwest come out, we will post it on that medium there over at Facebook. So that way we can get it in front of you as quickly as possible because we're recording our podcast episodes weeks in advance. So they have time to be edited and professionally produced and go to market. So if we were to talk about it on here, it'd be too late. So definitely you want to follow us on Facebook. We've also got a cool Disney group out there on Facebook that is not for travel agents because most of them are supported by travel agents, but we've got a cool Disney World and Universal tips and trick for people that aren't travel agents uh, that if you want to follow us there, we always do daily polls. We're doing a lot of cool things with that site as well. So good place to stay in touch with us and to find out what's going on with a drier dose of Disney and our podcast and our tips and tricks at Disney because Ultimately, that's why you're here, is you want to hear the ways to shorten wait times, save some money, and lower the cost of the Disney trips, or just to make them a little bit more special, which we want to do for you. Quick disclosure, because this episode will be a little bit quicker, like our Epcot one, just because there's really only one good touring strategy over at Hollywood Studios. But quick disclosure, there is uh, more than one way to skin a cat. So there is always going to be different opinions out there on the best ways to rope drop all these Disney parks. So By all means, not one is better than the other, although we do think that ours is pretty good and we think that ours is a great way to go. Ours will definitely shorten wait times for you and will help you navigate and get through the park and get out of certain areas of the park so that you don't have to uh, get stuck in the crowds there. The other things that we like to talk about are things like air conditioning and rain, because obviously in Orlando, it's either going to be rainy in the afternoon or it's going to be hot. So we're going to also talk through, as we go through the list today, which rides you need to consider that with, because they are going to be different at every single park. And you may want to hit some of those rides that are most important to you early in the morning if you're going to be subject to either high temps or rain. And with that, we always like to say, if there is a must ride, a ride for you and your family, so something that your family absolutely wants to do. By all means, rope drop it. Go there first. That is a great way to shorten your weight. The rides we're going to talk about today are always going to be your most popular rides and how to avoid the crowds and the wait times there. But we definitely want to get you through the best rides in every single park. But if your family has a ride they absolutely want to do, go do it. Don't follow this tip and trick for shortening your wait times at Hollywood Studios. So let's talk about the fact that when you go into the park, all the Disney parks, the Guests that are on resort are able to go in 30 minutes in advance of the traditional regular guests that are not on resort. And today's tip is going to be the same. 
So whether you are on resort or off resort, if you're able to get into that park, whenever that is and whenever that rope drop is, this strategy is going to work for you. Now, when you go to Hollywood Studios, they're going to queue you up a little bit differently. So those that are on resort are able to go through the turnstiles and get into the park and have full access to the park. Those that are off resort are actually going to be segmented over to the side, usually to the far right before going in the turnstiles, and they are not allowed to go in until you get closer to that time. As the time gets closer, they will continually move that further left and take away a couple more of the lanes that the resort guests are using until you get to the point where they're using all the lanes. And once you get there, you will be able to turn around and see that there's a couple thousand people behind you because it is a tighter spot. And as soon as the park opens up and they let you through the turnstiles, you have full reign and full access to go in there. So we definitely say get there early so you can be towards the front of the line. If you can't get there early, don't fret. Just make sure you're standing as far to the left as possible and each time they open up a new lane, you'll be able to go in and, and fill into that lane. So you may be lucky and you may be able to, when they open up a new lane, go to the front of that lane and move right over just a little bit there so that you're close to the front. We were about halfway back the last time that we went and by halfway back, we were halfway between the turnstile and the ticket booths. And as they opened up lanes, we just kept moving over and over. And by the time we got to a lane that we were close to the front, we were like fourth in line. And as soon as uh, they let us all in, we were able to go right through and go right to our first ride there. Good tips and tricks there just to learn the lay of the land and how to get into the park and how to do rope drop there. But without any further ado, here is our rope drop strategy for Hollywood Studios in Orlando. So as soon as you uh, get to the park and you're about ready to go through the turnstiles, I do highly recommend you pull up the My Disney Experience app and you check Rise of the Resistance. That is the coolest Star Wars ride that there is. It is in the back of the park. And the reason you want to pull it up is you want to make sure it is running. This ride is the one I would say at all of Disney has the tendency to go down the most. That and Seven Dwarfs Mine Train are the two that you see go down quite often. And this one, Rise of Resistance, will go down randomly and it will go down for half the day very quickly. So you want to check to see if that ride's available because if it's not, uh, we'll talk about a strategy there. But that is going to be your go-to ride. Regardless of what the wait time is, they can take a lot of people into this queue. They can take a lot of people onto the ride. So you are definitely going to want to go to that ride first. When you get through the turnstiles, you are going to go up the street and you are going to hang a left and you're going to walk over towards the Indiana Jones Stunt Spectacular. You're going to walk past the giant at AT from Star Wars, uh, which is at the Star Tours ride, and you're going to go right past the Muppets area and through the tunnel down there, and you are going to be right there next to Rise of the Resistance. So that's where you want to go. Basically, I can say just follow the crowd of people because that's where most of them are going as well. When you get in there, obviously that queue is going to move. That thing is going to move very quickly. In fact, we had an in incident a few months ago where my daughter forgot her ticket and I had to back out and go back to the ticket booth to get it. It took us about 10 or 15 minutes to do that. Once we got through the turnstile, my wife was already in line with a group of our family and she was telling me, hey, we're moving quick. You better hustle to catch up with us. And I hate being this person. This is the only time I've ever done it where I got to the queue and I merged my way through the queue to find my family. And everyone's like, yeah, likely story you're cutting to the front. But I told my wife at one point, I said, just stop because I'm not going to catch you. Everybody's moving too quickly. And we caught her in the next room, which was the room uh, that you go into to do the pre-show. So I can tell you that the wait time for us, and this is 4th of July weekend, our wait time at Rope Drop was less than about 10 or 15 minutes. Basically, the amount of time that I had to go back to get that ticket because I was able to walk just as quickly as they did. That's how long they were waiting, and we got through that queue very quickly. So you're going to want to Rope Drop, Rise of the Resistance. It's the best ride in the park. I would recommend come back and do it a second time later. We did it over 4th of July weekend, and it didn't take us that long. So Rope Drop that as soon as you get there. As soon as you're done, I am going to give you a different tip and trick and that is one of the best food items that we've ever had in the park is actually at Hollywood Studio in the Black Spire Outpost for the Galaxy's Edge area for Star Wars. And that is the Ronto Breakfast Wrap. It is just so great. It's wrapped in like a, 
almost like a soft tortilla pita type pocket with a, a sausage. You've got some egg, you've got some great sauce on there. So we always do Rise of the Resistance. We'll go grab that quick pita. There are some cool drinks there at that same stand. So we'll get one of those or we'll go around and get a blue milk, green milk. We do like both. We'll talk about those on our food episode. My wife does not enjoy them. I do. Real briefly, blue milk tastes like a berry Skittle. So if you've ever had Skittles in the purple bag that are the berry flavor, it tastes like that. Uh, the green milk tastes like Skittles that are lemon lime. So some people will say it tastes a little more like plant-based or a little more earthy than that, a little bit like grass I've heard described a couple of times. I don't think that at all. I think it's lemon lime. I think it tastes great. So we like to get both of those. Once we do that, we go over to Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. We use single rider there. I've heard, and I've not confirmed this, you check it out if you go, but I heard a rumor from somebody who goes to Disney a lot, who I'm very good friends with, who said that they found out that there's actually two single rider lines when you go in there. So when you go through and you walk through single rider, you'll get to a a place where you have to go upstairs. They said, if you turn around, there's actually two staircases and both have signs for single rider. The issue is, is when you're walking towards it, you only see the one staircase and only see the one sign and everyone goes up that side. They said, when you get there, turn around and go up the other set of stairs that no one else sees and no one else knows is there. That will even be a quicker way. And they've used that uh, tip in the in the past as well. So we do single rider at uh, Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run and we take care of that. And then when we're done, we may hit a couple shops, but we get out of Galaxy's Edge for the time being. We will always come back later and try to ride Rise of the Resistance later and maybe do some more food, some more blue milk, green milk, but we wanna get out of that area. But you wanna leave on the side of Smuggler's Run. You wanna leave over there and go into the backside of Toy Story Land because your next ride is going to be Slinky Dog Dash. This ride at this point of the day is probably gonna already have a 45 minute to an hour long wait. But being an outdoor roller coaster, you want to do it now. And the reason is what I was saying earlier about the rain and the heat is you want to get to that in the morning before the rain comes in or before it gets too hot because that queue is going to be outside. And if it does rain, they will shut down that ride. So you want to do Slinky Dog Dash uh, as soon as you're done with the Star Wars land. And as soon as you're done with Slinky Dog, you can hop right on over and do Toy Story Midway Mania which is a really cool ride. Now at this point in the day, that wait should be about 20 to 30 minutes because you've been quick in the morning. You knocked out Rise of the Resistance, Smuggler's Run. Hopefully you did Slinky Dog and you are still ahead of the crowd because this crowd will move clockwise through the park. And I know that's a tough analogy because Hollywood Studios is not a circle, but they will go through uh, the Star Wars Black Spire Outpost, Galaxy's Edge. They will go over into Toy Story Land. After that, they'll make their way over towards Aerosmith's Rock and Roller Coaster and the Hollywood Tower of Terror. So that's the path that you're also taking, but you want to be ahead of the crowd. So you'll go then into Midway Mania. You'll ride that. Again, if you want another snack, we do like the box tarts over there. We'll talk about that all on that episode. And then you're going to come out of the Toy Story Land. When you come out of Toy Story Land, take a look at your My Disney Experience app. Look for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. That is a newer ride that a lot of people do rope drop. You're going to want to see what the wait time is there. That one does not have the queue space for the crowd. So again, the wait times will be usually projected to be a little bit longer than they are to keep people away from the ride. But if you're getting a wait time of 30 minutes or so, definitely you want to go in there and ride it. If you're getting inside the Chinese theater mock-up, your wait time at that point is going to be probably about 20, 25 minutes. If you're close to the door, of course, if you go deeper into the Chinese theater, your wait time is probably going to be about 10 or 15 minutes if you get all the way into the second room. They do load uh, theater rooms so that you're going to watch a little pre-show. Do watch for the explosion, see if you can't figure out how that works. And then you get into a secondary queue, which then takes you to the ride. So that one does have a little bit of a lengthier queue because the way they split it up. But in the end, if you're able to get inside the Chinese theater, uh, your wait time is probably going to be less than 30 minutes. And that's a cool little ride to try at least once. If the wait time's long, skip it because you're going to come back through this middle section like 10 times during the day. So you'll have another opportunity to look for a better wait time later in the day if it's more than 30 minutes. In all honesty, I probably wouldn't do it if it's more than 30 unless it's the last ride of the day and I just I haven't done it yet. Then, of course, then I would try to wait then. 
But then you're going to go over and you're going to pick between the Rock and Roller Coaster and the Hollywood Tower of Terror. Whichever one has the shortest wait or if they're about the same, then my recommendation is go into the Rock and Roller Coaster. Check the single rider line there. When you look, uh, you'll see where the little ramp is in the stucco area. So there is an outdoor stucco ramp. And if there is no single riders waiting out in that area, get in line and do single rider because once you're inside the building, your wait's about 20 minutes or less. So go do single rider at that point in time. Now, if there's a large crowd and the line is out into that stucco ramp, you'll see it wraps like a big U back towards you. Then I would probably skip it and go do Tower of Terror first, come back and check it out later. That is the only single rider line that I will say at Disney World is just as long as the queue if it's out in that stucco area. Of course, if it's inside the door, go do that. If the general queue is less than 30 minutes, I may just go do general queue and hop in there just because that thing's going to move quickly, especially if you got a good size group and they're going to get you on that as quickly as possible. So you're going to want to knock out both of those. Now, my I can do this all day tip of the day, and it's actually two full tip. When you are looking at rope drop strategies, like I said earlier, you want to look at Rise of the Resistance, see if it's broken down. If it is broken down, skip the Star Wars land, go straight to Slinky Dog Dash. And the reason is, again, you want to get that ride done first thing in the morning, so that way you don't have to worry about the rain later. But that ride, uh, Rise of the Resistance, has a tendency to go up and down all the time, and you're going to get a chance hopefully later to come back and do it. So keep an eye on it. I have told friends that if it's down most of the day, you see it pop up in the afternoon, you will see longer wait times, probably 60 minutes to two hours. If that happens, then that is when I may consider doing an individual lightning lane purchase. So other than that, I would never do it, especially if I can get on there first thing in the morning and know that as you go forward in time, ride stability gets better. But that one does have a tendency to break down. So first, I can do this all day. Tip of the day is do Slinky Dog Dash instead of Rise of the Resistance if it is broken down. Second tip is shows. There are tons of shows. Your whole goal is to get through the rides at the park before one or two in the afternoon. Check the show schedule. If there is a show that you absolutely must see, then by all means, go jump in the show and go get in that crowd over there and go watch the show. Just know that when you come out, you are now in a huge, massive group that is going to be going to hit all the rides. So your wait times are going to be astronomically higher than they would be if you waited to do the show later. But if you have a big Indiana Jones fan like me or a big Frozen fan or Beauty and the Beast fan, go do those shows when they're available. Now they do run throughout the afternoon. So like I was just saying, your goal is to finish between one and two in the afternoon and have all your rides done because then we'll tell you, go enjoy the shows. The shows are absolutely fantastic. We love Indiana Jones. We love Beauty and the Beast live on stage. The Frozen Sing Along is a great show as well. Muppets 4D is a fun show if you're a big fan of Jim Henson and the Muppets. I grew up with that back in the late 70s, early 80s. So I absolutely love it. My daughter, not as much, but I think it's cool. And then the one ride you're going to save for the very end or just whenever is going to be Star Tours, which is over by Indiana Jones and between that and Muppets. And the reason is that ride is typically the wait time is very short all day. It's usually less than about 20 minutes. Just find a time when you're over there that it's 10 or 15 and go hit Star Tours. But we like to think that the Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run is a very similar ride, but 10 times better. So go do that one, do single rider. And if you end up missing Star Tours towards the end of the day, it's okay because you did basically the exact same ride, just in a much better format with Millennium Falcon. If you get the chance though, check that one out as well. Doing all that, though, you have now gone through the entire park. Hollywood Studios is the smallest park of all the parks. It used to have the fewest rides until they added the Galaxy's Edge Star Wars land there. Even with that, it has fewer rides than most of the other parks. So it is a park you can definitely do in one day very easily. If you follow this rope drop strategy and start with Rise of the Resistance, get out of the Galaxy's Edge, do Toy Story Land, get out of there, go do Rock and Roller Coaster and the Hollywood Tower of Terror, get off that side of the park. All that you're left with is Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway there up front or uh, Star Tours. There is another small ride, the Alien Swirling Saucers back in the Toy Story Land. That's one that we always skip. We don't like spinning rides and it's a little kid ride. So we typically skip that one. But if you've done everything else, then why not? Go check that out. 
I would also encourage you, check the night shows. They used to do Fantasmic at Hollywood Studios. That is a great show. They are not running that currently, but hopefully, fingers crossed, that will come back very soon because that one is a lot of fun and it's a great show. And they actually have a great watching area, unlike Magic Kingdom. So at Magic Kingdom, when you watch the fireworks show out in the main circle by Main Street, it's crowded. There's nowhere to sit. You're just standing around. Over at Hollywood Studios, they actually have a stadium seating built into the ground where you can go sit on these rows of concrete and not a bad seat in the house. You can actually see all the show from wherever you're sitting. So great show to go see over there. Fantastic if that one's available. But that is our tour over at Hollywood Studios. So Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Start, like I said, with Star Wars Land. If it's closed, go to Slinky Dog Dash and you'll do great. Hope you have a magical vacation. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.